Hey, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Thanks for tuning in to the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM. If you're interested in sponsoring my show, you can send me an email to the Mike Wagner Show at gmail.com, or you could also donate to the uh, podcast. Just go to the Donate Listen site, and um, you can also donate whatever you like. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. For those who are interested, Anchor can give you everything you need in one place for free, which means right from your phone or computer. We've got creation tools. allows you to record and edit podcasts so it sounds great. And those distribute the podcast for you so you can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple, Google, many more. And you can make money from the podcast with no minimum listenership. So download the Anchor app for free or go to Anchor FM to get started. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show brings you famous celebrities and amazing people from all over the world. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com. And on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. So sit back and relax and enjoy the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition way. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, as well as Apple. You can also check out the Mike Wagner Show at the YouTube channel on the Mike Wagner Show. Make sure you subscribe and take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. We're here with a wonderful author who got started on a trilogy. He's a mystery author from Winona, Minnesota. He has six books. We'll talk about the first, Death by Drowning, which is set in La Crosse, Wisconsin. He's worked as a journalist for 30 years in the Midwest in newsrooms, spent 12 years vice president and uh, at Winona State, former president, CEO of Hiawatha Broadband, and he just keeps going and going and going has a lot to say and has a lot to write about and of course he's got one of the best stories out there we'll talk about the first book and this isn't a death by (laughs) story here but ladies and gentlemen we've got live from somewhere in the wilderness and he's not being haunted by death ladies and gentlemen mystery author gary evans gary good morning good afternoon good evening thanks for joining us today mike it's a pleasure (laughs) <laughs> well, it's great to have you on. So you're a mystery author in Winona, Minnesota. You have six books, and we're going to be talking about the first, Death by Drawing, which is set in La Crosse, Wisconsin. You've worked as a journalist for 30 years in the Midwest and in various newsrooms. You spent 12 years as vice president at Winona State, and you're a former president and CEO of Hiawatha Broad- Broadband. You keep you keep quite busy here, but you find time to write. But before we get into the book, uh, Death by Drowning and some other ventures, tell us how you got started. Um. It, it's a fascinating story, Mike. I uh, had had a big fight with my father. I'm, I thought I won, but in retrospect, he probably did. Um, I wanted to go to Winona State. He wanted me to go somewhere else, and we finally agreed that I would get my way, but I would pay for it. Mm-hmm. Um, right after the discussion ended and I had said, well, then I'll pay for it. Mm-hmm. I realized I had not a cent. Um, on a trip to La Crosse, um, we stopped at a little uh, supper club in Galesville, Wisconsin. There was a gentleman sitting next to me who had had maybe one or two or maybe five too many. Mm -hmm. And uh, I suddenly discovered that he was the editor of the Winona Daily News. Okay. Um, uh, He asked me what I was doing. I told him uh, I was looking for a job, and he told me to come in on Friday and he'd have one for me. Mm, Nice. (laughs) So that's how I got started in journalism. Purely accidental. (laughs) 
That is amazing, too. And uh, you've worked um, for 30 years in the Midwest and a number of newsrooms. And what are some of the fascinating stories that you have covered? And what do you consider what, the most unusual that you ever covered? Well, I think, Mike, that the story that Death by Drowning is based on was probably one of the most fascinating. Um, Beginning in 1987, there was a young male college age who drowned in the Mississippi um, at La Crosse, Wisconsin. Nobody thought much about that. And then another one came in 1988 and a third in 1989. Mm -hmm. And soon there were lots of people talking about that. It continued for 11 years. One male, college age, autumn of the year, always ruled accidental. It just seemed like a story that cried for a novel to be written about it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and of course, too, with um, all these killings and everything else, um, l- like with, with the serial killings and in real life, if the, um, the, the, the mystery ever gets solved, you, you put a different twist to it as well, too. You add a couple of um, characters involved. You have um, you know, police detective Alan Rouse, Sheriff's Deputy Charlie Brzezinski, and you also have uh, Julie Sonoma, and you also have um, Kelly as well, too. And... Um, also, along with um, Charlie's wife, Charlene, and also, um, and, and I'm trying to remember, it was um, Alan's um, other wife as well. I'm trying to think it's Joanne. So they all seem yep. to mix together. And um, what, was some of it based on like the real husband and wife's uh, interaction, or was it just um, simply like a, a foray of um, you know, stories mixed in? That's all out of my head. Um, I know that each of the drownings was investigated by all by different people. So um, Al and Charlie um, are purely uh, my imagination at work. Mm -hmm. That that that's amazing, too. And um, also, have you uh, talked to uh, the police about about these? And um, also, I have to say that... um, with the book as well, that the 15th body pulled from the river prompted the investigation. And also, I was just trying to think, too, that um, that I have to say is, is that, um, you know, what was like the actual prompting and why did it take like 15 bodies to start prompting the investigation? Well, I think I think what happened there, at least in my imagination, was that when the police went to pick up the body, Um, and took it to the morgue for um, an autopsy, it was discovered that um, there was a puncture wound in the ear canal of the 15th body, which led to um, the investigation that uh, ultimately proved that all 15 had been the work of a serial killer. Wow. Why, why, why would someone puncture their ears, you know, just to uh, kill them? It's like, why would someone do that, puncture their ears? It, it, it would be a great place to put a needle stick uh, in place because it is an area that rarely gets much attention um, in an inspection of a body. Hmm. It, it sounds like somebody did their homework pretty well, and it sounds like um, maybe somebody might have been a doctor or maybe someone who used to work in a pharmaceutical company or maybe someone had access to drugs. And we noticed that, um, you know, Purple Fall was uh, mentioned a lot, and um, that became highlighted when Michael Jackson took the drug, and that's how he eventually died with the uh, Purple Fall. And uh, do you think um, part of your book also might have uh, eliminated that drug for good? Well, I don't think so, but uh, I do have a good doctor friend who helped me with my research. So um, that's how um, the details on the autopsy, the findings, the drugs that were used um, found their way into the book. Mm -hmm. And also, too, you have uh, Julie Sonoma, who who worked as well, too, and... um, 
live for a bit in Arlington Heights, Illinois, and um, also just a connection too. What is the connection between you and um, Arlington Heights? I I have no connection to Arlington Heights other than I've watched a few golf tournaments there. But I needed a big city nearby, and um, I didn't want Chicago itself, but I Mm. did want a place near Chicago. Mm. And, and of course, you must have watched a lot of golf, and that's also home of uh, Arlington Park. And when I read about it was Arlington Heights, and I said that uh, I know some friends that lived in Arlington Heights, and our kids went to Arlington Heights, and it made me think of Arlington Park. That was amazing. Absolutely. And golf as well, too. And uh, you've watched some golf tournaments as well, too. And um, what, what, what years did you um, happen to watch golf, and uh, who happened to win, by the way? Well, actually, the last golf tournament I watched down there was the Ryder Cup, I think about four or five years ago. And and if you'll remember, Mike, that was the golf tournament that the U.S. went into the final day leading by an almost insurmountable margin and got beat. Um, so it was um, a pretty spectacular day that brought a lot of very long faces to um, the shores and fairways of that golf course. Mm-hmm. And, and do you think maybe in, and maybe in your next novels or something, it's like you talked uh, fishing, you also talked about some other things. Maybe um, golf you can also uh, put in there too. Well, you're, you're probably going to find um, in your future reading um, that horse racing plays a prominent role. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and I think that's also featured as well, too. And of course, um, you know, Julie went through some pain, too, that like, you know, you know, 14 years um, her son was born. And I guess um, Sean, as mentioned as well, too, drowned in 1987, that it was just, you know, what would one would think it's like, you know, you know, disappearing. And it makes you wonder, it's like, was it really foul play then or was he drunk or something? It's like what was going through her mind at the time? Exactly. Exactly. And um that happened um, very early in her pregnancy, as you know, and so she raised the son by herself. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, he turns up that um, he he helps Julie along the way, and in some, and um, in some mom are friends as well too. And there's also some marriage conflicts as well too that you have uh, Charlie and Charlene. They're they're just fighting nonstop, and then you've got. Um, Alan and his wife, you know, seems to be a perfect couple. And then you also have, um, you know, the doctors. You had Dr. Olson, and you also had um, Sarah working in a lab. And, of course, you know, just the thing about Charlie and Charlene is that with them fighting constantly, is that um, do, do you think this uh, marriage would have been solved in any way, shape, or form, or were they not um, compatible from the beginning, especially with him being I, the uh, police chief? I think that... Um Charlie took the only way out that he really had. He divorced her um, and found somebody in Arlington Heights. Mm -hmm. So um, that trip to seek a killer turned into something more than that for the people that made it. Alan Rouse wound up in an affair. Uh, Dr. Olson wound up with a wife, and so did Charlie. Charlie's was a new wife. Mm-hmm. And, and, of course, this all come together later as well, too, while they're pursuing the actual killer. It's also in Death by Poison. We'll talk about that in just a bit. You listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Looking for a professional website without breaking your budget? Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google, Google Play, and Apple. 
You can check the Mike Wagner Show on the themikewagnershow.com as well subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on YouTube and take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. We're here with mystery author Gary Evans out of Winona, Minnesota. He's got six books. He'll talk about the first, Death by Drowning, which is set in lacrosse. He's worked as a journalist for 30 years in the Midwest and the newsrooms, and he's seen just about um, everything possible. This is tied into Death by Drowning with Serial Killers and getting to Death by Poison, the pursuit for the serial killer continues and then you also have um, Detective Al and um, Deputy Charlie just continuing, continuing to search. And aren't, aren't they out of their jurisdiction to um, continue to search for the killer? They are. Uh, they are, but um, they are doing their pursuit um, through the cooperation of the local authorities in the areas where they go. Mm-hmm. So... You know, probably pushing the envelope a bit, but not totally. Mm -hmm. And, and of course, too, that um, the serial killer is also um, trying to find ways to elude and also trying to find labs just all over the United States and, um, you know, make making um, the deadly concoction. Is she going to continue to, um, you know, killing more people that way? I um, think that she discovers that Killing can also be a wholesale business. Mm -hmm. So um, she can manufacture drugs that are used by bad people across the world uh, to solve problems they have. Mm -hmm. And, and, and of course, a lot of this is also uh, based on the accounts of uh, true cold crimes in the area. And, And of course, who would think that um, a lay of that stature would uh, contribute to the killings as well, too, and um, with, with some of, with some of the crimes as well, too. That um, that that with with uh, with that type, it's like you know, easily solvable. Or how many of the cold cases have gone um, unnoticed in the cross area or unsolved? Well, I think there are a number, um, and uh, what I discovered in researching. Uh, Death by Drowning and the other two books is that there are probably tons of crimes committed in the country, capital murder, that are not solved and are labeled accidental. Along the way, uh, Mike, I uh, became acquainted with a couple of um, retired detectives from Orange County, California. Mm -hmm. And what was fascinating about my introduction to them is that they were now back at work in retirement, working exclusively on cold cases to try and bring them to solution. What happened is technology has evolved so rapidly and with DNA coming into its own, suddenly there are a lot of cases that were labeled unsolved that are now being solved. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, you're like you're going to go on, so go ahead. No, no. Okay. All right. And and also, too, um, do you also think that um, looking at the DNA, what, was that, uh, did that evolve back then in 97 or something? It looked like I was reading some of the book. You figure, pull out some DNA, and you figure they would just catch the killer easily. But it seems like it's not so, it's not so easy with that. Actually, DNA has been an evolving um, force in, in police work. Actually, only in the last decade, I mean, there were some early um, exploitations of DNA, but when DNA really became um, known and used was early in the um, new century. So um, it is now causing a lot of cold case work across the country. Mm-hmm. And also open leads as well, too. Do you think uh, DNA would um, be, be better used, or is it being uh, abused at this time? I, I think that, um, obviously, it's going to continue to evolve, and it's going to become more and more 
um, useful to people following up on cold case leads. Uh, but I think it's being used effectively and morally um, currently. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it sounds like it, too, as well. And um, that also leads into um, the other book coming up as well, too. You know, we were talking about Death by Drowning and also your third book uh, coming up, um, Death by Poison, as well, too. And, um, you know, we'll talk about, um, you know, just briefly, listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and Apple. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device and subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. We're here with mystery author Gary Evans out of Winona, Minnesota. He's got six books. And we were talking about the first book, Death by Drowning, that's set in La Crosse, Wisconsin. We talked briefly about um, Death by Poison as well, too. And also a third one, just very briefly, and we'll talk about the second and third books next time, and um, called Death by Payback. And it seems like that um, things are catching up a great deal. And as, as they say, it just gets thicker and thicker and thicker as she gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And, and it sounds like... Our, our heroes, Alan and Charlie, are really in deep on this one. Yes, they are. As a matter of fact, their, their chase takes them through the southern states, takes them across the west coast, and on into Montana. Wow. Um, and so uh, Genevieve, as the um, villain is named, um sequesters herself in the mountains of Montana, and it's up to Al and Charlie to try and figure out where she is. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that's also in the third book as well, too. And uh, where can they find their books? Uh, can obtain them through uh, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, um, many other bookstores across the country. Um, and, uh, but I think Amazon and Barnes and Noble mail order are certainly the easiest places to use. That is amazing too. We're looking forward to that. And, um, you know, just, uh, just a few things as well too. What was that one precise moment that influenced you into writing these novels? Well, I, I always wanted to see if I could write a novel. Um, I had retired for the second time um, and just sat down one Saturday morning and started writing. Um, and that's sort of sort of how it all came together. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, it's based on um, the, the, the work you've done over 30 years as well, too. Who are some of your favorite writers um, growing up as well, too, like in journalism well, and novels and um Writers overall, who are some of your favorite writers? Growing well, up? certainly from a novelist's point of view, David Baldacci, Vince Flynn, James Patterson, John Grisham would be on my list. Mm -hmm. um, Jim Klobuchar, who is the father of Senator Amy Klobuchar, who is currently in the race for president, mm -hmm. uh, was probably the person who influenced my writing style more than anyone else. Uh, Jim was a columnist at the Minneapolis Tribune when I was working there in the 1960s. And um, Jim was a phenomenal writer from the Iron Range uh, in northern Minnesota. Mm-hmm. That is amazing as well, too. And um, also, you've also watched some um, TV as well, too, like inspired by news events and crime and everything. What are some of your favorite TV shows growing up? Well, I, I have of late become a reality shows fan. And 
watch a lot of outdoor shows as well, but certainly of influence uh, on the books I wrote was CSI mm -hmm. um, and Blue Bloods as well. Both of those shows were on my favorites list and and both contributed to the kinds of things that have gone into my books. Hmm. That is amazing, too. Of all the CSIs, they mention all the um, cities like Miami, New, Sh New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, and everything. What do you consider your most favorite city when it comes to watching CSI? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I, I guess uh, um, the Washington, D.C. area is a particular favorite. Mm -hmm. and, and and also, too, what's what's your next project uh, when it comes to uh, writing as well? You've also got uh, novels four, five and six coming out. Just tell us a little bit about that. And then afterwards, what's your what, what was your seventh book uh, be about? Well, I'm not sure about that yet. My um, my fourth book is a uh, is called Moonshine Melody, and um, it's based off stories that my father and father-in-law told me of the Prohibition era. Mm -hmm. uh, book number five is a story of a uh, kidnap cold case that uh, was also uh, major national news out of La Crosse, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And the sixth book uh, that I'm writing now uh, is on a um, group of high school graduates who were tormented by their high school yearbook, and one of them now is taking it into his or her hands to avenge the kinds of things that were written about them. Wow, that sounds like something uh, happening in schools these days. It sounds very familiar. Yeah, sure does. And and of course too, <laughs> and and of course too, you know, compared to the um, journalism you grew up, uh, you know, in the sixties and seventies and eighties and beyond. How do you compare the uh, journalism today in terms of uh, social media? Well, social media has certainly. Um, taken communication to new levels. I, I was just thinking about that this morning. You know, we didn't have um, any of those services when I was growing up. And today, think about it. They are influencing world events. They're influencing politics. I mean, social media has become perhaps the single greatest influence in our lives today. Mm -hmm. and, and do you think that's for the better, or do you think that's gotten out of control compared to the journalism uh, you grew up writing? Well, it's, it's like everything. There were publications that I didn't think much of in my day, and there are social media outlets that I don't think much of today, but there are others that I couldn't live without. So, you know, I, I think that uh, on balance, I would have to say that social media has called has caused much greater enlightenment in the residents of this country. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, too, people are always wondering about the accuracy in social media. And, of course, you know, I, I grew up in journalism myself, being a sports writer myself, and try a little bit of news, too. The thing we're always told is verify, 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 if, if your mother says, I love you. Do you think the people on social media are still verifying the facts, or is this like, you know, if, if, it's, on the, if it's on the Internet, it's got to be true? <laughs> well, I think there are a lot of what, things on the Internet, and we were just talking about this at dinner last night, that aren't true. Um, but uh, I, I think that there are a number of social, social media outlets that could do a lot more with the verification process than they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, you, you also see a lot of... Um you know, false sites, fake news, and everything else. And, of course, you went on from journalism as well, too. You spent 12 years as vice president at um, Winona State. And just uh, tell us about that. Well, it, it was a great career. I, I had done some teaching as um, an editor at 
the Winona newspaper I taught at St. Mary's University for a few years and discovered that associating with young people is a great way to stay young. And so when I got a chance to go to Winona State to work for a great president, I thought it would be um, a fun thing to do. It turned out to be that. And um, that led, then the internet led me into the world of telecommunications, which was a 15 year career as the CEO of a high tech telecom company. Wow, that is something going from uh, vice president Winona State <laughs> to um, president CEO of um, Hiawatha Broadband. And uh, what, um, what got you interested in uh, broadband? Well, as a matter of fact, um, it wasn't uh, it wasn't what it was who uh, the founder of Fasenal Company, which is headquartered in Winona, asked uh, me and a friend of mine, Bud Beckler, to do a feasibility study on this new medium called fiber optic cable. That was back in about 1990. Mm -hmm. um, we we think of 1990 as being not too long ago, and yet in 1990, the Internet had very few users. Mm -hmm. I remember and, that, and yes. We were way ahead of the curve on that one, and uh, ultimately uh, Bob Kirillin and his um fellow founders of Fastenal provided the funding to create a not-for-profit initiative to collect our, or connect our schools um, via fiber optics. And that then transformed into a network that all Winonans could access. And from there, it, it spread to more than 30 communities in southeastern Minnesota. So that, too, was a fascinating career. I've been a very lucky guy. I have never wanted for excitement and things to do, and uh, I would wish that for everyone. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you th talk about 1990 with the Internet being few. I still remember the dial-up where it's like, beep, beep, like that, or somebody on the landline is just like, could you get off the Internet? i got to make a phone call. I still think about when I hear 1990. Absolutely. And if you also remember, most of us that were using the Internet were making toll calls to AOL in Chicago to get connected. Oh, my goodness. Of course, you had the modem, and then you had the fax yeah. machine, and, of course, the pager was like the luxury item, and then you graduated to a car phone, which is like a huge device, and think about it. It's like, it may seem recent, but it's almost like, wow, 30 years ago, it's almost. It's like, it's amazing yeah. how, how technology has just grown like crazy. <laughs> yeah, to, and think about how it rules our lives today. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I was walking down the street the other day and there are three young ladies ahead of me and they're all playing with their cell phones. And so I finally, as they were getting ready to turn the corner, I said, I see you're all texting. And they they nodded and I said, who are you texting? <laughs> and they said, each other. <laughs> Can you believe it? We're probably going to become a generation where we communicate through our fingers rather than with our mouths. I don't know. It's oh, oh my it's, goodness! You know what? It's going crazy, buddy. You know, some I'm, I'm thinking about right now with with the with the Mike Wagner show with you being on so so many other programs as well too. We'll probably end up doing interviews by texting. Or it's just like a voice and then just transform the text. It's like, I don't know, I don't know if you come up with a good idea or what. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Makes me wonder too frequently. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, you know, I kind of want to go back to the typewriter in a sense too. And of course, with um, the uh, police detective, Alan, and Sheriff's Deputy Charlie, and of course, with um, Julie and, um, and, and everybody else in the story, it's like, 
you, you know, imagine if they use the technology today, what would they, what would they do? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It does make you wonder, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. You know what? I think that's a good idea. Maybe for the uh, southern book, it's like you know, step ahead and what happens when they infuse the new technology. I think about that. So <laughs> ah, that's a good idea. I'm going to have to give that a lot of thought. <laughs> I like that. We'll talk about that in our next interview, especially the second and third books and a preview of the um. Third one as well, too. And, of course, um, you know, just a couple of things, Garrett. We're going to have you back on next time. Um, who do you consider your biggest influence in your career? Um, boy, that's a very interesting question. I was raised by my grandmother. And, um, Mike, I, I would have to say that my grandmother was certainly the biggest influence in my life. Mm-hmm. I was a very precocious little brat (laughs) and, uh, you know, my, my grandmother sort of figured out a way to take some of that out of me. Mm -hmm. So she was clearly a dear lady who should not have had to put up with this little brat (laughs) after raising her own children. Oh, that's amazing too. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Do what your dream tells you. If you want to write, and I had this conversation last night with a young woman too. If you want to write, there is nothing better to do than sit down and do it. Mm -hmm. Don't let your dreams just float around in in your head. Mm -hmm. Make them reality. That is amazing. And, uh, Gary, we're going to definitely have you back on. We'll talk about the second and um, third books as well, too, um, Death by Payback, Death by Poison. And we'll talk about the um, really fourth, fifth, and sixth books. And, uh, Gary, just want to give a big thank you for your time. Looking forward to having you back on soon. Once again, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's the website, how the people contact you, and where can they purchase your books? Well, Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com for openers. Uh, My website um gary evans.com will get you there um there's another one tailteller evans.com that you can use um mike it's been a pleasure you are a great guy my friend oh thank you very much and uh you as well gary looking forward to having you on again soon and uh perhaps we'll meet up in lacrosse one day and uh do everybody a favor and keep us up to date Yeah, you know, they brew beer in lacrosse, Mike. Yes, that's right. Very familiar. I've been to um, (laughs) some of the breweries in Milwaukee, wanted to go to uh, the Line of Kugel, Chippewa Falls, and uh, we got to have our cold one in some time with fresh brew. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Very good. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. Also, become a sponsor of the program and or donate today at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again tomorrow for another episode of The Mike Wagner Show.